My gun was handcrafted to my specifications. I rarely draw it unless I mean to use it. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, Mr. Paladin. Yes? Uh, about that imported silk shawl you ordered as a gift for a lady? Oh, yes, very pretty. But uh, you didn't say about the color. Is it for a blonde or a brunette? Why... I'm not sure yet. Perhaps you'd better leave one of each. Just oh. tell the clerk at the desk to charge them to my bill. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Paladin. Ah, oh, there you are, hey boy. Oh, yes, Mr. Paladin. I have two messages for you. One from San Francisco City Jail. Mr. Holgate say he get you a card and want you to come see him. Oh, yes. He's the murderer who's afraid he'll be lynched when they take him back to stand trial in some little town in Wyoming. Oh, mm -hmm. and he say you better hurry. Sheriff come here and take him away on 9 o'clock train tonight. And the other message? Ah, uh, pretty lady wait for you. Huh? Over there. Oh, it's too bad. What I tell her, Miss Paladin? Give her my sincere regrets, hey boy. Tell her later. I have a train to catch. Even if you've had embarrassing dandruff for years, you can get rid of it now in three minutes. That's all it takes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Yes, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes with Fitch, quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. What's more, using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Just apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes, with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. At the same time, gentle Fitch can leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. <laughs> You just made it, mister. Hey, give you a hand with that bag? No, thanks. I can manage. Uh, you carry it like it was eggs. Most room up in the front. Say, what's going on in there? Why, well, I don't know. <laughs> it's that murderer. He's loose. Look out. Oh, I beg your pardon. Get out of the way. You seem to have gotten tangled up in an iron clothesline. Get out of my way, you crazy fool. Yes. Stop, Paul Gates. Stop right there. I'll blow you in half with this shotgun. Oh, you clumsy fool. Well, Sheriff, why didn't you just pull the trick and end it right here? You might as well have. You just get back to your seat real careful, like. Take them leg irons off to make you more comfortable. You pay me back by kicking me in the head. You just catch me trying to be decent to you again. All right, now, sit down. Take your leg out. And to you, mister. Thank you. Glad to be of help to an officer of the law. Uh, you're only helping a man get lynched, that's all. Shut up, Holgate. If you don't mind, Sheriff, I'd like to talk to your prisoner. Oh, sure. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Holgate, you got my card. I got your message. Your paladin? I figured you'd be on my side. Who'd you say you was, mister? The name is Paladin. And your name? Sheriff Swing. Oh, what is this, a cozy chat? Listen, Paladin, I hired your gun to turn me loose. You're hired to turn him loose? <laughs> Mr. Colgate has his facts slightly confused. Uh, would you mind pointing that some other way, please, Sheriff? Thank you. Now, Mr. Holgate, what makes you think you'll be lynched? Easy. 
The town's named Bender, after Max Bender. It was his son caught my bullet. And how did you come to shoot him? Oh, just an argument in a saloon. A few drinks. You know how it is. You had a gun? Well, he had one. Oh, sure. It was home on his dresser. Well, how did I know that? I didn't notice. I see. Well, Mr. Holgate, tell you what I'll do. For $200, I'll see that you're delivered alive to stand trial. <laughs> you call that a bargain? Man has a chance with a fair trial, but there's no debating a lynching bee. All right. You'll get the money when I step into the courtroom. And just to be sure, I'll choose somebody to hold the fee. Uh, when's the trial, Sheriff? Uh, circuit judge will do it at the end of the week. We'll beat him there by, oh, a uh, day, maybe. And what are the chances of my employer here being lynched? I reckon somebody's going to try. Will you stop it? Well, that'd be a hard decision to make. But I can assume we're on the same side. Aren't we, Sheriff? I reckon. <laughs> that puts two of us on the side of the right. Now, well, don't crow, mister. Them ain't good odds with the whole town on the other side. I never did like this town. Don't worry, you won't be here long. At least there's not a mob to meet us. Nope. Just the Benders over there. Who are they? Max Bender, his daughter Amy. The town's named after the old man. Uh, howdy, Max. Uh, Miss Amy. Uh, hello, Sheriff. Sheriff. How'd you know we'd come in on this train? We waited on every train. I wanted to see the man who killed my son. He's going to have a trial, Max. Yeah. My brother didn't have a trial. No, Amy. Or a smart lawyer who might trick him to freedom or get him off with a prison sentence. But the man who killed him will have a trial. Who are you? Paladin's my name. Mr. Holgate hired me to see that he isn't lynched. <laughs> so the gunfighters are all for law and order now, if the pay is right. No, Miss Bender, you don't buy law and order. You fight for it. Yes, once you have it, you don't throw it away. Your father knows how hard law is to come by. There will be no trial. Your neighbors will come for him, Sheriff. I know you'll do what's right. I think he will, miss. And so will you. Seven nights a week on CBS Radio, most of these same stations present The World Tonight. On The World Tonight, ace CBS newsmen broadcast direct from where the news is developing, along with well-detailed eyewitness reports on current events. The World Tonight brings you lively interviews with people in the news. When big things are happening in London, Paris, Moscow, Tokyo, or Rome, they're all within speaking distance on The World Tonight. For a penetrating look beneath the surface of the news, CBS Radio invites you to hear Eric Severide's news analysis. Wise in the ways of the news, Eric Severide explores a particular and important aspect each weekday evening. Invariably, he comes up with new keys to understanding. Always interesting, always illuminating, Eric Severide's perceptive news analysis makes an exciting companion piece to the world tonight. Listen for both of these fine news features regularly. Oh, you can relax, Holgate. You're safe in there. Temporarily, anyways. Yeah, but they'll be swarming around soon enough. You remember you got a job, Paladin. To keep you from getting lynched, I'll remember. Greetings, gentlemen. Just passing by and saw the light. Figured you were back. Howdy, Mr. Coombs. Oh, good. You didn't waste no time, Coombs. My client and I must start preparing our defense. Oh, uh, who are you? He's all right. I've hired his gun. Name's Paladin. Oh? Well, now, if we can have some privacy. Oh, sure. Prisoner's got a right to have counsel with his lawyer. Let's wrap on the bars when you're through. Oh. We still have some business details to arrange, Holgate. You tell your lawyer to turn the fee over to the person I name. I'll tell him.
Sheriff, sure, you mind if I bed down in one of these cots in your office? That's all right. Then uh, I'll be using the other. I thought it was settled. We're on the same side. I'd just like to be sure. Hmm. Any place I can lock this up? Roll top desk has got a key. Good, it'll do. Hey, uh, well, what's in that bag, anyways? Just some of the tools of my trade. What kind of tools is that? The kind that might help quiet a lynch mob. We give them Holgate. That'll quiet them. I thought we were on the same side. We are. I'd just like to be sure. Which one is the Bender store, Mr. Coombs? That one, up there. Yeah, there's a noose hanging out in front. Yes, that's Amy's doing. Is she stirring the pot until it boils over? I never suspected she had such a mean streak in her. She was always such a nice, quiet girl. I guess it's frustrating for a woman. She can't strap on a gun and settle an affair like this with her own hands. Oh, I, uh, I hope this won't take too long. I have more important things to do. Like figuring a way to save your client? Something like that, yes. Mm. Shall we go in? Well, what do you want here? I want you to hold some money for me, Mr. Coombs. Here it is. Two hundred dollars. You're not to give it to me until Holgate steps into the courtroom for trial. If he dies before then, return it to Coombs. You think I'll hold your blood money? Blood money? For keeping a man alive? I'll hold that for you. Dad! Give it to me. Thank you, Mr. Bender. Give him the money, Mr. Coombs. Very well. There you are, Max. Dad, if you won't help us, at least stay out of it. How can I do that, Amy? I live in this town, too. Good day, Mr. Paladin. Good day, sir. Amy, your father is a very wise man. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I uh, guess you don't need me anymore. I'll be in my office, Paladin. Miss Amy? Look, Mr. Paladin. I just want Holgate to pay for my brother's murder. I don't want anybody else to get hurt. So far, no argument. Now, Sheriff Swink's not going to shoot at his friends, so no one will harm him. Go on. That leaves just you. But you're liable to kill somebody and be killed in turn, and there's no telling where it'll stop. It would seem so. You're doing it for money. What if I gave you more money to leave town now? That's a definite offer, I take it? Cash. I'll get it right away. No, wait. I'm afraid not. Switching sides is most unethical. Unethical? Why, Did you... you ever see a lynching, Miss Bender? No. Your imagination would fall far short of the truth. No matter what he's done, Holgate won't be handed over to feed the animal instincts of the mob. I, I told you, I, I don't want anybody hurt but him. Amy. Yes, Clint. You need any help? No. The trouble with a lynching, Miss Bender. You can't have it ordered up all dainty, neat, like a yard of lace. It's something that cowards get whiskied up for and mumble over and wind up screaming in the gutters of a dark night. Go on, go on, get out of here. There's, there's nothing you can do to stop it. Isn't there? Listen, mister. You take her advice, get out of town. A double blast from this shotgun ought to cut a man in half. That man won't be any deader than a man with a forty-five bullet between his eyes. There's room enough out there in front, gunfighter, for another noose. So there is. And earth enough to bury every man who comes to me with a rope. Men, think how thrilled your wife would be if you made her a bedside table that swings on hinges like a gate and brings everything within easy reach. Or a beautiful built-in dispenser for paper towels, aluminum foil, wax paper, and plastic wrap. Or narrow folding doors to replace that wide closet door that blocks the hallway. These are just a few of the exciting ideas for living better on less money in the new popular science magazine, now on sale at your newsstand. It's crammed with new ideas, new products, new tips and techniques for lovers of cars, boats, woodworking, metalworking, photography, hi-fi. 282 pages, 380 pictures. There's even a special money-saving 20-page booklet on how to fix electric motors. It's bound right into the magazine. 
And this month, to win new friends for popular science, the magazine is now on sale at your newsstand for 10 cents off the regular price, only 25 cents. Get the new February popular science today. Look for the bright blue band on the cover. Popular Science Magazine. What's going on out there? I didn't hear them. I'm gathering down in front of the Bender store. I'm getting steamed up. They'll be moving before long. Yeah. Well, you fellas don't be napping. We won't. What you looking at me like that for? What are you thinking? Just wondering what you're thinking. You're mighty cheerful for a man about to face a lynch mob. <laughs> well, I got confidence in you and the sheriff. I figure you'll give them what for. Coming. Well, see you in court. You better, or you don't get paid. What is it? Well, here, have a look. What? Funny thing. See them two riders just leaving Coombs' place, heading down the side street, trailing a third horse? Yeah, they look like two cowboys. Yeah, and Willie and McKeith, the Holgate's friends. Now, what would they be doing at his lawyer's? Well, I've got a better question to chew on. Who do they figure to ride that extra horse? Uh, yeah. Oh, I reckon that question's going to have to wait. They're getting about ready to move. Uh, there's another shotgun in the closet, Paladin. No, thanks. Incidentally, Miss Bender says you won't use that shotgun against your friends out there. Well, Miss Bender's mistaken. <laughs> Sheriff, I'll buy you a drink after this is over. Maybe. Well, looks like everybody's here. I'd say we're all ready. What's the matter, Amy? Nothing. Nothing's the matter. You'll bring him here. Yeah, so you can put the rope around his neck. You just wait here, and we'll bring him to you. Dad, what you doing with that gun? Well, Max, you change your mind? I'm going to the jail. Stand beside the sheriff and that fellow Paladin against his mouth. Now, hold on, Max. You're getting turned around. From the beginning, we had decency and law in this town. Now you're going to wipe it all out in one night. We're doing this for your son. No, don't use my boy as an excuse. Get out of my way. You better stay here and take it easy, Max. Now give me that rat. Clint! Never mind. The sheriff will give me another rat. I said stay here. Get your hands off me. Dad, don't. Clint, don't. Oh. All right, now. Come on. Let's go. Let's do it. Dad. Oh, Dad. I'm all right. But, Amy, what have you done? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know it would be like this. Well, here they are. And Paladin, you better get that shotgun. I've got something better in the desk. i get back. I'm warning you. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. Hey, Paladin, what are you doing? Opening the door. No, no, wait. All right, hold it, hold it. No need breaking down doors when you can open them with dynamite. All right, now. Here, who wants it? You, big fella? No. Well, if nobody wants it, here. Just putting out the fuse. It was a long, slow burning one. That crowd is still running. I don't blame them. Well, they won't collect again. Mob courage is a momentary thing. Once it's gone, it's gone for good. Well, the street's clean deserted of them. Except over there. Yeah, there's Clint. Let's go after him, pal. You go ahead. I got a client who thinks he doesn't have to go to court. I'll nail Clint. We can tie this thing up. Go ahead. I'm going back and check Holgate. Willie. Willie, what's happened? I can't hear nothing. The crowd's gone. Something's wrong. Well, we better go ahead anyway. Now, whip your horses and pull out the bars. That's fine. You did it. You, did it. you hold it right there, Holgate. Paladin, don't shoot! 
All right, out there, you stay where you are. <laughs> All right, just stay put. You, you killed Willie and McKee. You're good, awful good. That's why you hired me. Yes, but there's no call you get mixed up in this. You, you, you just collect your money and forget about it. I couldn't do that. I can't collect until you walk into the courtroom. Listen, Paladin, I'll make it a thousand if, you, if you'll just walk away. You don't understand. You hired me to get you into that courtroom, and that's where you're going to be tried for murder. Mr. Paladin! Mr. Paladin! Oh, hello, Amy. Mr. Bender. Here's your money, Paladin. Two hundred dollars. Thank you. Now that Holgate's in court, there's a lot of people in this town that are grateful to you today, but it's not in their nature to come out and admit it. Well, I... I'm, I'm admitting it. <laughs> and with such a long face. I'm, I'm so ashamed. I, and, and confused. Why, why did you want me to hold your pay? Because it's an honest face, too. What? Well, come, come back to Bender again, Mr. Powell. I'd be delighted. Goodbye. 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 Mr. Paralin, welcome back to San Francisco. You have a good trip? More excitement than money, hey boy. But it's good to be home. I take you back. No, no, I'll manage. Oh, you have something valuable in it? <laughs> no, just the tools of the trade. Oh, big secret. Uh, something to upset Apple Cart? <laughs> you might say so, yes. Oh, uh, by the way, hey boy, that pretty young lady who is... Oh, yeah, she's still here and look plenty lonesome. Oh. Now, let's see, was she, was she blonde or brunette? Huh? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Eat on, hey boy, and uh, forget the papers tonight. <laughs> Have gun. Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Sam Rolfe and adapted for radio by John Dunkel. Featured in the cast were Jack Edwards, Jack Crucian, Virginia Christine, Olin Soleil, Roy Woods, and Vic Perrin. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>